Welcome back to the show. Well, the Prime Minister is facing a new controversy this morning as Cabinet Secretary Arthur Sinodinas faces calls to stand down over a political donation scandal. Here's what the Prime Minister had to say last night. Election donations, political donations, whether they are made to a state division of the Liberal Party or the federal division, should all be disclosed in accordance with law. And all of those donations should be disclosed. Well, here with us this morning is Assistant Minister for Innovation, White Roy, and Shadow Communications Minister, Jason Clegg. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you too. Now, White, I'm going to start with you. Arthur Sinodinas was Treasurer of the State Liberal Party at the time of these donations. Unless he's got something to hide, why would he reveal, refuse to reveal where these donations came from? Well, I must confess I'm not an expert of the inner workings of the New South Wales Liberal Party, and I think this is in regards to the 2011 state election. That's but, true, and he, he was Treasurer at he, that time. He, he was. Uh, as the Prime Minister said last night, of course, all of these uh, donations should be disclosed uh, under the law, and that's exactly what should happen. I did notice that Arthur put out a statement last night saying that some of the claims made by the Electoral Commission were wrong, uh, and I'll let um, them prosecute uh, that argument. Uh, basically, I think the understanding was that uh, he wasn't asked to disclose that, as it was sort of reported, and uh, I'll let his statement stand, and, and we'll see what comes of it. Wasn't he asked to disclose at the time? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, actually, to the inner workings of that, uh, but Arthur's basically said that there has been some misreporting on what's happened from the Electoral Commission, and I think that we'll, we'll see this flesh itself out. But, of course, this should be disclosed under the letter of the law. That, that makes perfect sense. Well, Lisa, part of the problem is that it seems like almost every other week there's another member of the government that's under investigation from the police or from ICAC or now from the Electoral Commission. I think Arthur Sinodinas is in a lot of trouble. Remember, as you said, he was the finance director of the Liberal Party when this happened. If the Liberal Party now reveals that these were illegal donations that were made to the Liberal Party when Arthur Sinodinas was in charge of the finances of the Liberal Party, then I think uh, his position becomes untenable because he was the man in charge of finances for the Liberal Party when all these illegal donations were made. And, and when we say illegal donations, the problem is you're not allowed, if you're a property developer, for example, you're not allowed to make those donations because the idea is that will equal some sort of favourable decision from the <coughs> government in return. Yeah, the law in New South Wales is very clear, and that is for state elections you can't donate to a political party if you're a property developer. What looks like has happened here is the Liberal Party have allowed property developers to donate to the Liberal Party and then they've hidden that. Now, Arthur Sinodinas was in charge of the finances of the Liberal Party when this happened. And so, if he was responsible for it, then I think his position becomes untenable. And, and untenable, particularly at a time why, when we're leading up to an election, clearly, maybe even sooner than we originally thought. And uh, the, the Prime Minister told me earlier this week that Arthur Sinodinas is such a trusted part of his inner circle that Arthur Sinodinas knew that the budget was being brought forward before the actual Treasurer did. I mean, this is a man in a very trusted position. Arthur is an enormous con uh, contributor to the government. Uh, he's been around a long time. He's very wise. Uh, he provides incredibly uh, wise counsel to the Prime Minister and the entire Cabinet, uh, and he's a key player, and I think that uh, we are fortunate to have him. He's put out a statement saying that the claims that the Electoral Commission have made uh, are false, and I think that we shouldn't be jumping to any conclusions in this case. And, of course, the donation should be disclosed under the law. If it's found that he hasn't done everything to the letter of the electoral law, should he stand well, that, down? That is an enormous hypothetical. Uh, I think we should, give him, the I think the we should electoral... give him the benefit of the doubt, given the statement that he's put out. Uh, at the that... moment, the Electoral Commission are holding back $4 million in well, funds. I, I think we should give him the benefit of the doubt, obviously, given that this story has just broken, uh, that he has put out a statement contradicting it. Uh, I don't think we should get into those sorts here's, of hypotheticals. Here's the, here's the problem for the Prime Minister, for Wyatt and the Liberal Party. The election was effective called this week. We've got 99 days till the election, effectively, and it hasn't been a great start for Malcolm Turnbull. We've had Tony Abbott undermining Malcolm Turnbull from London, Malcolm Turnbull undermining Scott Morrison, and now you've got Arthur Sinodinas allegedly involved I, I, in this I illegal would, slush fund. And, I, and no talk about health, education I would, I would or jobs. Make, I would just make one point. We're talking about corruption here. The reason the Prime Minister is recalling the Parliament is to consider the Australian Building and Construction Commission, which was a successful policy that existed before, which was about ensuring that the rule of law was maintained on our work sites. We know the construction uh, industry contributes, is the third largest contributor to the economy, employs over a million people. The Labor Party isn't as excited about the idea of the rule of law being maintained on construction workplaces, which will help economic growth 
will help Australians get more jobs. Well, uh, the and we have this political argument not coming back. Is saying, the standard you've got to set for your own ministers. And, and we should have this debate in the parliament around the Building and Construction Happy Commission. To. This was an ex successful policy that existed in, in the past. Everyone knows the militancy uh, that we see on construction sites in this country. Uh, that is stopping economic growth then the creation of jobs for Australians. Well, people, people um, want really to talk about jobs, to they want to talk about healthcare, they want to make sure they can actually get into hospital and get the services they need, they want to make sure their kids have got a great education. But all we seem to be talking about in the first week of an election campaign is Tony Abbott, Scott Morrison and Arthur Sinodinas. People don't want us talking about ourselves. They want us to talk about what we can do for the country, and that's Malcolm Turnbull's problem at the moment. With 99 days to go, is the Labor Party ready to, um, to jump the gun? And, yeah, and we, we certainly are. I, look, I think we're the underdog. We have to make history to win this election. But well, we've, you... got, we've got two things in our favour, Lisa. The first is that we're united. You've got the Liberal Party at each other's throats. And the second is we've got policies great policies, you've, whereas in the Liberal Party at the moment, the problem is taxes. they talked about, they, well they talked about um, cutting income tax, the, the talk for the last few weeks is cutting income tax, now that's been ditched and now they're talking about company tax, now I think that's rubbing salt into the wounds of everybody watching this morning to think that companies are going to get a tax cut but Australian workers aren't. All but right, across okay. under Labor everyone Hang gets tax more. <laughs> I'm in charge here. You've got a problem with Bill Shorten's popularity, but that's going to have to be a subject for another day. Gentlemen, thanks very much for your time this thanks morning. Thanks so much. And thanks, happy Lisa. Easter to both Lisa. of you. Cheers.